everybody. I wanted to give a huge thank you to Melanie for your donation. That's totally awesome. Thank you so much. I am very happy that you're happy to be a part of this um, ration challenge and to be helping refugees. It's amazing. Uh, today is day four and I'm actually losing track of the days now. Um, and uh, in an earlier video, a couple of days ago, I had talked about how some people were um, experiencing medical issues and they, some people went to the ER. Uh, quite a few people now have been saying that they've had to stop the challenge because they've started internal bleeding. Uh, a lot of the diabetics had to drop out because the diabetic um, numbers were way too high. It's supposed to be about 100, that's 414. And uh, yeah, uh, some people have passed out, uh, actually getting physically sick. People are uh, finding all sorts of really nasty side effects uh, to this type of ration diet. Um, and I'm feeling them myself. I thought I could handle it, um, but what I've been experiencing myself is um, kind of sort of this apathy, uh, lethargy feeling. Uh, I'm, my body's kind of sort of going through uh, difficulty trying to regulate temperature where I feel hot but I don't and it can't figure out if I want to be hot, too hot or too cold. So it's really bizarre. Um, I've only felt that when I've gotten extremely tired. Um, I've gotten a little bit more weak feeling in the joints. Um, a little bit quicker to kind of sort of annoy where, um, like some people have reported getting really, really hangry, grouchy or whatnot. I'm just kind of like, ugh, whatever. Uh, that's kind of sort of how things go. It's like my computer program for work that I've been doing keeps crashing and I'm just like, ugh, not again, really. Um, I've noticed that my skin texture has changed. Um, my heart rate has changed. Like getting up and down, um, my heart starts to race. Um, sometimes me just sitting here, um, I'll start feeling the heartbeat kind of weird, which is very concerning considering that um, I have a uh, genetic family history of heart attacks and heart problems. Um, my kidneys have been sore um, and I know like I come from a family with a lot of uh, medical background so I have no shame in talking about body functions or whatnot because it's natural everybody who has a body has some sort of these functions as nothing really should be embarrassed about uh, when stuff goes wrong. But like I've been having irregular um, digestive problems, um, gaseous discomfort. I've definitely had the foggy minds. Um, my speech is definitely affected. Um, my senses keep going in and out, such as like I've got heightened sensitivity where sometimes um, like I feel like I can hear things more. It's kind of like when you're in that fight or flight mode um, and your, um, your senses kind of go really, really intense and you're aware of everything around you. My body's going through that um, because of this ration diet. Um, I can feel that my blood pressure has changed. Um, and like I've had like a, I wake up with slight pressure headaches um, from the, my blood pressure rising. Uh, and uh, some of them have lasted uh, a little bit more than 12 hours to where it's not like huge, like uh, I can't move and do anything kind of, but it does, um, it does, it's not comfortable. Um, and also um, being female, uh, I have noted that my cycle is unusually light uh, because my body is going through so much stress with this uh, ration challenge diet. Um, I wanted to share also um, something that I wrote this morning to some of the other challengers when I woke up um, and I was going through like pressure, headache kind of deal and um, uh, yeah, I, um, 
I thought I could do this challenge because when I went to art school, I was so poor, I was only able to afford to eat what was being thrown out at the coffee shop I worked at. I currently work from home and have such a tiny food consumption due to my sedentary lifestyle. So the portion sizes I knew wouldn't be um, a massive slam to my body. I lived in a very dangerous apartment in San Francisco's Tenderloin District in 2015. I can, and I can hugely empathize with refugees' living conditions. Uh, the building I lived in had no heat, no clean water, was infested with bugs and all sorts um, of all sorts and mice. It was supposed to be a secure building with a locked entrance. But people on the street um, broke in several times a day and were squatting in the abandoned apartments um, surrounding mine uh, and others throughout the building. These were not just hopeless, homeless people looking for a place to sleep. These were drug addicts and gangsters. Uh, there was always bodily fluids of every kind, as well as bunch, um, bunches of used bloody needles uh, lining the halls and narrow stairways. At night, I couldn't sleep because they would shine flashlights in my windows uh, to see if I was home. They would trigger the fire alarms almost on a nightly basis. And if people left their apartments, they would try to break in during the alarm. Uh, the police were in the building sometimes up to three times a night, removing the trespassing individuals, but then would release them soon after. The walls were thin and I could hear every fist fight, every prostitution encounter, and every conversation. I heard them talking about how they once stabbed their drug dealer in the stomach and they hoped that he would get over it tomorrow so they could buy drugs from him then. I had people sitting drugged out at my door trying to talk to me at two o'clock in the morning saying, it's okay, white girl, we, won't hurt, we aren't going to hurt you. While well, they went on a rambling tangent of nonsense trying to, get, trying, to let, trying to get me to let them in. Every time I left, work, left for work, they would pop out of one of the abandoned apartments or the stairwell and crowd uh, me to try and see if there was anything worth breaking into my apartment for. I was the only official tenant in my building that did not get broken into in the eight months that I lived there. I would go into more detail about how terrifying that living experience was, but I won't right now because I will start breaking down and crying. Um, I, I know what it's like to live in so much fear that you're constantly on edge and sleep deprived. I know what it's like to have nothing to eat. The big difference is that I am an American in America, where there are multiple institutions, programs, etc., to combat these and get uh, to slightly better living conditions with more food options. Refugees do not have any of those options. As I'm doing this challenge, I can feel my heart rate change, I can feel my blood pressure change, my kidneys and digestive system are letting me know that they are not happy but are familiar with this kind of stress. I can feel my body go into survival mode and I'm getting flashbacks of the ha hardship that I endured. It makes me want to help the refugees all that more. Um, I want to finish this challenge and I want to continue to raise awareness. And all that is true um, I am also active in a couple of other things that are local and if anybody uh, that watches these videos who wants to support me while doing this challenge because these guys really don't have any way to get out of this. I mean, uh, one guy, the, um, the guy who basically is a Syrian refugee who's stuck in Turkey, he can't get work because he's a refugee and he can't leave the country because he's a refugee and they won't like he's having difficulty trying to survive because um, he kind of sort of um, is disabled because of the arm damage he got when uh, when an attack happened uh, so yeah these people have it a lot worse and I would love to uh, extend help any way that I can because a little bit goes a long way sometimes and um, here at home when it comes to the people at home and helping them 
uh, I am active in helping with them. And if you um, are also helping with these types of things, let me know and I'd be more than happy to help and sponsor and support you too. Um, so that way we can just help people because there's a lot of suffering in the world and there doesn't need to be. Um, but anyway, I'm going to wind up rambling and probably repeating myself because I am tired and I need to eat again. I found out that me waking up and soaking chickpeas, uh, lentils and rice, and then mixing it with a little bit of oil and flour together in the morning, kind of making like a pancake, and then frying it in the oil actually was really nice. Um, I wound up uh, being satisfied up until about one or two, and then I needed to eat. And then I was, um, I had about, um, I made one cup of dry rice, which makes three cups of rice, and I split that in half, and then put a little bit of kidney beans on the rice, which was really great. And I'm about to fry up the other half of the rice for uh, dinner. And um, I also had my last little chunk of tofu. But uh, yeah, I found that the way to survive on the rations is not to make actual meals, but it's to graze. So you make something and then you just nibble on it every time you start to feel a little bit of a hunger pain and it really takes the edge off. Um, and I'm sure that the refugees kind of do something similar. Um, or I'm at least hoping so because trying to eat actual meals where you sit down and eat is, is a bit, uh, it, it makes it more rough uh, trying to do this. But uh, yeah, anyway, like I said, I'm starting to ramble. So um, I uh, will see you guys or I will post another video tomorrow after sunset. Um, uh, good Shabbos and yeah.